Thanks for joining us. My name is Ibrahim Sani. If you are keeping an eye on the gold prices, you're going to be particularly interested to know that it has been on an uptrend. In fact, it's uh, hovering about $1,970 per troy ounce. Uh, this has been the kind of uh, peaking levels since we saw it in uh, 2020, mid-2020. Uh, and of course, this wasn't the case before this. For the past six or seven years, the price has been hovering at around 1,400 to 1,600. So the high levels of this, uh, the, the gold prices that we see right now, um, but between 1,800 to 1,900 has always been the new norm, so to speak, since the pandemic. Here to unpack this and more is, of course, joining me in the studio, uh, Habib Group's uh, Executive Chairman, Datuk Sri Mir Habib. Uh, Datuk, thank you very much for coming over. There's a few times you've been on the show. It's always a pleasure speaking to you. Maybe you can talk to us through the idea of what's driving the gold prices uh, right now. Why is it pushing upwards and where do you see the trend moving? Of course, uh, the last... Uh uh, three years uh, after the pandemic, there's been a lot of uncertainties uh, and uh, and we, we have always been very concerned about the inflation uh, because uh, overall, all over the world, uh, there was a lot of debt that was created uh, whether f with the QE of printing money or borrowing money and all that. So there's a lot of inflation and the hedge against inflation has always been gold. It's, it's one of the best hedge. Uh, beside that, I think uh, last year we saw quite a few things, uh, the war in Ukraine uh, as well as the energy crisis has also pushed up the gold price uh, quite a bit and there's a lot of uncertainties. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I think uh, uh, countries like in the US, they are trying to curb the inflation by increasing the interest rate. Uh, so, but even though with the increase of interest rate, we can see that the gold is still very strong. So, uh, either way, when we see, uh, it is between uh, recession, uh, there's a balance between a recession and inflation. Uh, either way, uh, it is a good, uh, a strong point for gold and that's why we can see the gold has been increasing. Okay, so forecasting wise, do you see this um, strengthening of the gold prices going to continue in the near term? Uh, I think generally uh, most of the, uh, uh, the consultants have said that the gold price looks like it's still going up. But um, I think if you really look at it, the last November, it came down as low as uh, 1,600 uh, yeah. plus, 1,630. Mm -hmm. But uh, today's... Uh, Last week, it actually hit, uh, there was one point uh, more than 2,000. Mm -hmm. So we, we already peaked. And uh, we are looking around 2,200 to 2,005 is what uh, is expected. Uh. Every time gold prices breach that 2,000 mark, it becomes some sort of a headline. Yes. Uh, do, do you feel that that's going to happen anytime soon uh, when it comes to gold prices uh, strengthening right now? Uh, yeah, the, the last one, one week, it has already yes. hit a couple of times. It yeah. uh, just hit about 2,000 and came down and still looking for some support. But I think um, <coughs> they didn't expect another, uh, because after the crisis, uh, the banking crisis now, uh, with the yeah. uh, Credit Suisse, uh, Credit Suisse and, and, SVB and, uh, and uh, Yes, uh, that's right. First uh, Republic. The Silicon Valley and all yeah. that. Uh, I think they expected uh, um, a Fed to control the hiking of the interest rate, but mm. they still did uh, mm. with the 25 basis point. Mm. Very recently, yeah. Uh, uh, very recently, so um, I think, but uh, the indication is there's it's going to be very much in control. So even though with the increase of uh, slight interest rate, uh, the goal is still very strong. So that is also giving us a very strong indication that the uh, goal is on its own and is quite uh, solid uh, as we see. Okay, so mm. how does this impact your business? Because uh, you were talking about gold being a hedge. I understand that. Mm. There's also gold that is being used as a luxury item. But how, how does that tie with the high inflation rate? And at the same time, people are still romantic out there. They still want to buy stuff for their loved ones. If anything, you know, just to hold or, or, or position themselves as a jewelry, jewelry for hedging. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, double up as a romantic kind of gift. Do you feel that consumer behavior is slowly changing for this year to adjust for inflation, to adjust for the new cost of living and many more? Yeah. So first of all, uh, there's one statement you said, uh, gold is looked at as a luxury. Actually, in Malaysia, we don't look at gold as a luxury, if you really look at it. Okay. Uh, because in Malaysia, we buy uh, gold for two reasons. Uh, one is in, as adornment. Uh, the second is as investment. 
uh, a very large number of uh, uh, generally people uh, don't uh, are uh, underbanked. That means they may have a bank account, but they don't have facilities and all that. Mm -hmm. Or some of them they don't even have a bank account. You know, so they're, they're unbanked. Mm. So uh, a lot of people uh, put their money. If this is traditionally in Malaysia, not just Malays. They are Chinese Indians. Traditionally mm. in Malaysia, we buy gold and keep them. And when we need, uh, let's say we want, they want to send uh, their children to uh, to university, or they want to go for um, pilgrimage or Umrah or Hajj and all that. People come back to sell the gold. Mm -hmm. So if you really look at it. Uh, Everybody buys gold in Malaysia. It's not just as a luxury. From B40, M40, everyone. So it, it is quite different uh, in that sense. So there is a, there's a lot of uh, confidence uh, uh, in gold uh, because if you, if you look at over the thousands of years, gold has always been a very uh, strong sort of a currency. Okay, but so what constitutes as luxury then? Is it diamonds, silver? Like, what would you call a luxury purchase for consumers in Malaysia? Okay. Something that uh, maybe don't have an element of uh, investment, uh, but they, people would like to still have it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, that I would, I would consider as a luxury. But, you know, uh, there are a lot of uh, jewelries, uh, watches or handbags and everything else, uh, especially the branded ones. So... Uh, the, the the price is very different, you know. Is there is uh, there is no element of uh, investment, some of it. So uh, people still want to have, but they don't need it. So that I would uh, consider as a luxury. Mm -hmm. uh, but in in this context, right, uh, people buy for two reasons. Uh, the reason why I'm saying this is because still a large number of people when they come to buy uh, jewelry. Uh, they also come and sell their old jewelries. There is a lot of trade in. You know, you're talking about about fifty percent. This happens in Habib. Uh, yes, yes, outlets? very much so. <laughs> so the trading happens in. So I bring my my version of uh, jewelry, or yes. and then I, I will uh, I guess upgrade to another jewelry. Yes, yes. At least fifty percent of what people buy actually they come and sell their old jewelries. So when you, when you're talking about gold price going up, uh, it is it is not. Not too bad for a lot of people because and because if it's trading, it damages. They, they also get a high price yeah. for their old gold. Yeah, know? and and the second thing is when the gold price is going up, that also gives a lot of confidence to the consumers. You know, so and and more confidence that they have, they they, they do come and invest in gold. You know? So do you, do you feel that gold prices does have a would you call it a, a positive demand among consumers when it comes to this market? Yes, very much so. Oh wow! Uh, you can see uh, last year itself. Uh, last year was uh, quite a very strong year for most uh, jewelers uh, in Malaysia, uh, because during this period there was also they were allowed to take out their money from the KWSP and all that. So some people uh, did invest uh, in gold mm. uh, because there's two advantages. Right? One is they get to wear something new as mm. jewelries mm. and secondly uh, the jewelry is, is, is also an investment so uh, that is also kind of a proof that luxury they're normally talking about the T20 who's buying uh, goods yeah. but uh, last year the people who took out money uh, uh, are general public mm. but uh, that's why the, the jewelry shops uh, have done well actually mm. uh, because people have come in and they get to buy something new at the same time, most importantly, it's also an, impo uh, it's an investment. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll go for one short break. When we come back, we'll discuss a little bit more when it comes to hedging risks and diversifying products with Habib Jewels. We'll be right back after these messages. Thanks for staying on. I have with me in the studio our good friend of the show, Datuk Sri Mir Habib, the executive chairman of uh, Habib uh, Group. Uh, Datuk, maybe we can talk about um, 
the idea of diversifying your products um, and perhaps hedging um, and arbitraging with, against some other classes of products. Where do you feel uh, the strategy is when it comes to managing inventory when, uh, of Habit Jewels, considering that there's volatility in the prices? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're talking about gold prices soaring right now, yeah. but it has dropped quite considerably as well. So that yeah. whole volatility has to be managed to some degree. Yeah. Maybe you can talk to us through some of the inventory management strategy of Habit Group right now. Okay. Uh, well, as far as uh, we are concerned, if the gold price is going up, so we don't have to hedge anything. We can just keep the stock and it is naturally going up. Uh, but generally, we also do not speculate so much. Like if we were to sell a certain quantity, then we replace it with that amount. And over the many years, uh, for a long term, uh, if the gold price is going up, it is fine. Mm. Uh, but the issue comes in is when you think that the gold price is going to go down, so that may be the concern, right? So during this period, what we will normally do is uh, we can pay a deposit uh, uh, to the gold suppliers and we borrow the gold. So when the gold price comes down, only then we will fix the gold. Oh, okay. So that's how we do it. <laughs> and does this impact supply chain then? Uh, it doesn't imply, uh, no, it, it doesn't have any impact on the supply chain because you are physically buying the gold and uh, we are, you're already paying, but you just didn't fix the gold price yet. So you're just buying the, uh, the gold bars and you know, we are working with our factories to manufacture the jewelries. So when the gold price come down, only then we fix the gold price. Uh, out of yeah. curiosity, yeah. are your factories here in Malaysia and your, your, your craftsmen uh, there in Malaysia or elsewhere? Yes, uh, we, have a, we have factories in Malaysia. Uh, our craftsmen are here, as well as uh, we do a large uh, amount of our jewelry in Italy. Mm. So we produce in Italy. Uh, we make, but we make in uh, 22 karat gold or 916 gold, uh, mm. which is very unusual in Italy. But this is specifically produced uh, just for Habib because most of the jewelry that is produced in Italy are 9 karat, 14 karat, 18 karat. Oh, okay. uh, but the 916 or what we call it, uh, 22 karat gold here in Malaysia is uh, something very unique. Uh, we sell high percentage gold. Uh, that is because of what I said earlier. Uh, jewelry is purchased as an invest in investment in Malaysia. So yeah. our we produce high percentage gold as opposed to if you were to compare with Europe, for example, uh, most of the jewelries are purchased as adornment. Where do you see this cultural approach of buying gold come from? Is it is it based on what our elders have been telling us? Is it uh, how we have been raised, why do we approach this purchases of jewellery as not as an adornment but as, a, as an investment product? Yeah, it has always been culturally, um, uh, it is, it's always been our culture, whether it is Indian culture, mm. Malay culture or Chinese culture. So we have a very, so strong. very, very strong <laughs> Asian culture. It is uh, gold has uh, seen uh, as a currency in that sense, and also a hedge against inflation. But what about the Gen uh, Zs, Millennial, Gen Alpha? Uh, do they have the same kind of cultural approach, or do they feel that you know I'm so much Ali, I just buy this as an yeah. adornment? But you can see the Gen Zs were investing in bitcoins. Uh, and some of them got burned as well. <laughs> that's some, I think a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yes, right? I think really a lot. So yeah. that, that is also has given a lot of uh, confidence in gold. So there are a lot of Gen Zs are actually investing in gold. Uh, but uh, sometimes it's uh, ETF or electronic, yeah. uh, electronically traded uh, uh. funds. But uh, the physical gold has always been uh, very popular because uh, sometimes, uh, you know, normally uh, these ETF and all that, when someone is buying, it should be backed by physical gold. But That's right. Sometimes it doesn't happen. So the, the safest would be the, the physical gold. So if you really uh, look at our uh, culture and, mm. and heritage from, mm. from long time ago, mm. uh, gold has always been seen as the currency. You know? mm. uh, and uh, even if you go back... Gold uh, standard. Yeah, gold standard, right? Mm. Even if you go back... Uh, uh, Zaman Rasulullah dulu, mm, mm. Uh, uh, 
you can buy one kambing with one dinar, mm. for example, mm. uh, which is uh, today, if you were to buy a kambing, it's almost the same. <laughs> so that is a proven of, that's a proof that it's, uh, it's a hedge against inflation. Mm. Whereas even uh, when I was a kid, uh, roti chanai was just a few cents. Mm. Now the price has gone up. Mm. Everything has gone up in, in our ringgit currency. Mm. But gold has remained as a, is the best hedge against inflation. Okay. Mm. Uh, now we need to talk uh, at length about Habib's approach on uh, growth. Um, mm. I've been to two outlets extremely recently, uh, mm. as recent as yesterday, um, oh, at the wow. KLCC outlet. <laughs> Um, uh, for some repairs. Um, okay. uh, and uh, last week I was at Habib um, Pavilion um, again for another uh, uh, reason. Uh, do you feel that the outlets are managing at capacity or are there uh, room for you to grow uh, your outlets elsewhere or at least uh, improve on the size of it? Because quite frankly, I was a bit surprised at the amount of people that was at these outlets and I didn't go at a peak hour or whatever it was just a regular time you know yeah. like I don't know 3 p.m. or something like that it was like strange <laughs> on a Wednesday you know what I mean oh yes and there's, there's a lot of people like the first thought is like you know what I mean like yes like it's not like a weekend or what yep. I can understand if weekend there's a lot of people now outlet wise that there is that element branches and all that mm -hmm. uh, the last time you spoke to me it was it was that whole notion of why is it that uh, malaysian shopping malls are not favoring local companies like habib why are they favoring international jewelers like your competitors i get that and and in fact after speaking about that on my show the last time w I, that was one thing that i keep on noticing right yeah. and apparently it's not just about jewelers as well yeah, yeah, all yeah. the other brands you know apparel yeah. you name it right yeah, yeah. so that's one area of concern another area is if you want to grow of course you have to take bigger inventory right yes and and how does that imply in terms of how you approach that whole pricing of your gold structure uh, gold uh, uh, hedging so yeah, how do you manage that kind of uh, uh, dilemma of uh, growth? Uh, yes. So uh, in terms of growth, right? So we always uh, think about the customers, uh, what's convenient, what's good for the customers. So this is why we started having a, a bigger uh, showrooms where we can give a much better experience uh, for our customers. So when customers uh, walk into our stores, uh, they get to see a variety so of so things. <laughs> <laughs> on a Wednesday, I just don't get that. Yeah. Yes. So th there is a, a variety of things that people can see, and also the services that we can provide, uh, like the repairs and everything else. Yeah. So as I mentioned, also um, people not just buy; they come to sell as well, uh, and and they not only trade in; uh, they don't sell and buy some new jewelries. Sometimes people do sell for cash as well. Yeah. So when we are doing this kind of uh, transactions, uh, our margins cannot be very high because we sell and we buy. There's always a spread. Right? Mm. So uh, the idea of us doing business uh, the way we do it in Malaysia is we, will, we, we, we need to have a high turnover with a low margin. Uh, that's why probably you see a lot of people mm. uh, coming into our shops mm. where, you know, um, as much as possible. I mean, our prices are very reasonable mm. and if we were to compare uh, anywhere else in the world, mm. Malaysia, I would say, is one of the best places, best place to buy jewellery mm. uh, because of this. Our overhead expenses are not very expensive mm. compared to other parts of the world. Mm. Uh, I mean, if you look at Singapore, which is a neighbouring country mm. or any other places, uh, our overhead expenses are still very reasonable. Mm. Uh, and uh, th the gold price has always been very reason reasonable because of the culture that we have. Do you feel that there is a market saturation that has been reached by Habib in Malaysia? Um, no, uh, there's still uh, room for you know um, expanding. Uh -huh. uh, but we need to make sure that every time that we uh, open a, a, a store, we must make sure that everything is working well and we are giving the best of the service to our customers. Okay, <coughs> but international programs then, mm. international uh, growth, mm -hmm. is that high on the agenda for Habib? Yes, uh, we are very seriously looking at uh, expanding overseas mm. uh, at the moment, uh, but m most probably we'll be looking into the regional, regional areas first before we go outside. 
Okay. <coughs> and has that been coming along well, uh, the regional growth? Uh, yes, uh, it is still work, uh, work in progress. <laughs> And uh, inshallah, hopefully something come up very soon. Okay. Yes. One more short break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation. Dr. Sri, Mirhabib. <laughs> Thanks for staying on with us. I have with me Dr. Srimir Habib, Habib Group Executive Chairman, joining us. Uh, let's talk some about some of the promotions that Habib is currently doing. Um, I understand that there's a, a promotion on uh, gold bars as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe you can share with us some of the ideas that perhaps some of viewers can uh, appreciate. Yeah, correct. Uh, so, uh, right now is the, is, uh, is the fasting month and we'll be celebrating Hari Raya. So, Hari Raya has always been... Uh, uh, this period has always been the busiest period uh, for us mm. uh, because uh, most of our customers would want to have something new and usually it starts off with children you know uh, Malaysian tradition is like that the first week they come and buy for their children first week of posa okay. <laughs> and then the last minute right before the uh, raya they will come and buy for themselves so, uh, and this year, you see, uh, Habib is looked at as a heritage jewel. We are very, very proud of a Malaysian tradition. Um, we want, to, we actually uh, inspire, we, we would like to put Malaysia in the map of the world through uh, culture and taste. Mm. A jeweler is looked at as a taste maker of a country. Oh, yeah? So, oh, yes. Wow. Okay. So, we really work really hard to come up with uh, something nice. And we are very proud of being Malaysian. You can see a lot of brands, right? Uh, they are Malaysian brand, but they have a foreign sounding name. Uh, but I feel uh, this is something that we have to, maybe it came from a colonial mentality. Sometimes people think that we are not good enough, but we are uh, really, really proud to be Malaysian mm. and as a Malaysian brand. Mm. And that's why we always, I, earlier on I was talking about, that's why we're always fighting with the shopping mall and whoever else, you know why uh, there's double standard, you know. Uh, a local brand is not given a good location, but you're giving a better location to a, a brand from overseas. Mm. So, um, so that's, that's something that we try to do. So uh, this year, um, uh, our theme is Tekat. So we got inspiration from that and our designs of jewelries and uh, we come up with the gold bars, gold wafers that we sell. Uh, it is inspired from uh, Tekat uh, and it is something very, very different uh, uh, this year that we have produced. And uh, we are very um, design centric. Uh, Habib is known for the design. So we do a lot of research to come up with uh, Malaysia or generally a Southeast Asian sort of a feel uh, in terms of design. So you can see a differentiation when you look at a Habib uh, product. The designs are uh, quite uh, distinctive and uh, from any other uh, brands. Okay, with this uh, in mind, who would be some of the people that might be interested to find out more? Is it um, the purchase maker, which normally is the man, um, uh, this, the, or the decision maker, which is normally the lady, mm. or the young or the old? Who's your target audience for this one? Uh, a lot of it is the decision makers. Uh, ladies has always been uh, uh, coming to Habib. Uh, but you know, uh, somehow or rather, uh, during the fasting month, uh, we also see the men coming along. Uh, last time, uh, I used to notice that uh, the men would uh, sit in one corner mm. while waiting for the uh, for the, the wife, wife uh, yeah, to get <laughs> to it open done with. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but today, uh, I see uh, quite a different, quite different. Uh, that the men are very interested uh, also uh, to uh, to understand. Uh, to look at what is happening, uh, maybe because of this element of uh, investment as well. And uh, every time they come in, they also try to uh, they ask for, uh, about what's happening and especially in terms of the, the gold price. Uh, and what, uh, the other thing that we notice also the men are the ones who are buying more of the gold bars. So it is not just the jewellery uh, that we are selling and people come, they come to Habib, they also buy the gold bars. So we have from one gram onwards to you know one kilo, mm. uh, and uh, as investment, uh, some of them would want to put a small uh, amount of their investment in gold. What about storage? Do you offer storages as well? 
I mean, uh, if I have one kilo of gold bar, I don't want to be, you know, simpan bawah bantal kind of situation, right? Yes, yes. Uh, a lot of people do, do keep themselves. But we can make some arrangement as well uh, if they want to keep with us. Okay. Yes. Final question. Uh, what is the uh, expectation for the business of Habib considering that the cost of living is still on high on the agenda? Yes, we've talked about it as an investment Correct, yeah. product, but still. Mm -hmm. Do you worry uh, for your own business when it comes to cost of living rising? Uh, the cost of uh, living rising that we hope that it can be controlled but I think the government is uh, taking a lot of steps uh, to control that cost mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time uh, it, it is still a goal uh, it's always been looked at as investment as well so mm. that part is not really uh, too much of a concern mm. uh, on the other hand uh, as I was also talking about uh, people coming in to trade in their old jewelries uh, you, you, you get to see more of these kind of things coming in. Mm. Uh, so it's not too much of a concern. Uh, we really hope that uh, we overcome this situation uh, very quickly. And uh, we, we have a lot of confident, mm. uh, confidence in what's happening right now. Thank you very much. That was Dato Srimur Habib, the executive uh, chairman of Habib uh, Group. If you want to learn more about this, just get on to some of the outlets or their websites. It's a pretty funky website as well. It's, you can browse or at least dream to buy some of the stuff that is presented there. For me, this is uh, all that we can bring to you when it comes to gold prices, commodity prices, luxury market, investment market, and of course, uh, just consumer demand market as well. My name is Ibrahim Sani. Catch you in the next one.